It is postcast time right here on Locked On Cougars. The BYU Cougars improved to two and zero on the season with a forty one to sixteen win over Southern Utah. We're breaking down the good, the bad, and getting to your comments as well. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us here on the podcast, and big thank you to all of you for the support, as always, as we are your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU. All right, let's dive right on in today's show. Uh, postcast edition, special edition of the podcast is BYU improves the 2-0 and on the season with a 41-16 to victory over Southern Utah University. Now, uh, we're going to start off today talking about the good, what I took away from this game. First things first, I think a lot of people out there, yours truly included, maybe had a little too much concern after game one for Keaton Slowis. Was he perfect in this game against Southern Utah? Absolutely not. But his final stat line, folks, absolutely monster numbers. 22 of 32, 300, excuse me, 348 yards, four touchdowns, completion percentage of 69%. They had the one interception early on in this game with a QB rating of 195.1. That'll do. That'll absolutely do it every single time if I'm BYU uh, watching Keaton Slovis play out there. I thought he was very, very good. Darius Lasseter had a pass that went right through his hands. And uh, there are some uh, missed opportunities in this game. And Keaton Slovis could have been, what, 400 plus yards in this game? Very very good performance from him. Very good to see him spread the football around. All four of those touchdown passes going to four different receivers. Chase Roberts getting one. He led BYU in terms of overall receptions with six on the day. Darius Lasser hauled in five uh, for 73. He had uh, a touchdown uh, on that screen pass. Absolutely phenomenal. His first touchdown in a Cougar uniform. Isaac Rex, 112 yards on just four receptions, including a touchdown that tied Gordon Hudson for the all-time in terms of uh, all-time career touchdowns for a BYU tight end. Awesome to see that. And finally, Keanu Hill. Welcome back, Keanu Hill. Three receptions, 41 yards, and a touchdown for BYU's leading receiver from a season ago in terms of overall yardage. So good to see that. Good to see guys like Parker Kingston have a better day. Keelan Marion, I thought had a better showing. They both had one reception each, but it was a good day in the passing game for BYU. Other things that I enjoyed. I enjoyed what I saw from this defense. Now, BYU only has the one sack through two games. And I get that that's concerning, and it is concerning to a, to a level. But BYU through two weeks has 14 QB hits. They have double digits in tackles for loss as a team. They're getting to the quarterback. The issue now is just finishing it and getting those sacks and getting those strip sacks, getting the ball on the ground. That's going to be the biggest thing for BYU, it feels like, as they turn up the intensity level by about a gazillion when they go to Arkansas next week, is now, okay, You've had your two warm up games for this BYU defense, and they've acquitted themselves quite well. But it, like I said, it's going to a whole nother level next week, and you're going to need to continue to generate the pressure that BYU is showing. I am seeing BYU get more pressure on defense right now. The issue is, at times, it's taking blitzes to do it, it's taking six man blitzes to get to the quarterback. Is that going to be a sustainable product or a model for BYU going forward? Only time will tell, but I know that Jay Hill will do it if it means he can get to the quarterback. He wants to disrupt play. BYU is not allowing these quarterbacks to get comfortable back there. Guys like Justin Miller in this game today, was he 50% on the day? Yes, uh, just north of it. 16 of 30 for 235 yards, 53% completion percentage. A decent day for him, but a week ago, you held uh, Keegan Shoemaker from Sam Houston uh, below 50% completion percentage. So it was a pretty solid showing for BYU defensively, I thought, overall. You limited Southern Utah to 84 rushing yards. They had 262 yards passing. For all intents and purposes, you made them fairly one-dimensional. I will say this. Southern Utah had better quarterback play than Sam Houston had. And I don't know if you guys saw this, but Sam Houston uh, ended up losing to Air Force in their quote-unquote home opener. They played it at Houston's NRG Stadium, which is the home of the Houston Texans. They lost that game 13-3. to That Sam Houston defense is absolutely legit. They're holding good teams down. The problem is 
Sam Houston don't, don't have no offense. They've scored three points in their first two games as an FBS program. So they got to figure that out. But uh, I thought Southern Utah was a better offensive team, not quite as good defensively, obviously, uh, based on the stats, as uh, Sam Houston was in terms of the overall output for BYU. But I thought it was a pretty solid day at the ballpark for BYU. 394 total yards, just three penalties for the 25 yards. There were not very very many of the, the drive-killing penalties out there for BYU. They cleaned up a lot of the stuff uh, that they had talked about wanting to clean up. Now, uh, they did have the one turnover, and Keaton Slovis did have a guy in his face that uh, he took the hit, and the ball just kind of popped up. It was a pretty bad start, frankly, for BYU, but they recovered nicely, ended up going on a nice little roll there, and it was a solid, solid win overall for BYU. Is it enough to make me think that BYU is going to go and uh, light the world on fire when it comes to Big 12 play? No, absolutely not. They're, they're, BYU is going to take their lumps, folks. They're absolutely going to take their lumps this season. You just see Texas go into Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama. You got programs like Texas Tech who lost a heartbreaker uh, to uh, uh, Texas, uh, not Texas Tech, Texas Tech lost to Oregon. You're watching these teams in the Big 12. They've got some talent. So BYU's got to get get ready. It's going to be very very interesting, like I said, once the, the the intensity level and the overall skill level that's required to win games, it's really getting turned up multiple notches next week, beginning with the game in Arkansas for BYU. We'll spend the next week, obviously, breaking that down. But I thought today overall was a very solid win for BYU. I don't have any other way to, to say it. I think they, they handled their business, did what they needed to do, and just went out there and owned this ball game. Now, what were the bad things? What were the down parts of this? Well, I haven't mentioned one part of the offensive performance for BYU, and we need to talk about that. We'll also talk about uh, some comments that Delane Fitzgerald made after the game that uh, a little bit of a head scratcher, and then coming up a little bit later on, we'll also get to your guys' comments right here on Locked On Cougars. Now, a quick word on our friends over at UCCU, a big sponsor of ours. Been working with us for months now. That's why UCCU is the new learn and earn feature inside the UCCU mobile banking app. What it is, is it's teaching you about finances, whether it's kids, uh, teenagers, you as an adult, grandparent, whoever it might be. They want to help you guys be smarter about in terms of knowing your overall knowledge about money. All you got to do is fill out these, you go through, do these quizzes and trivia games from our friends at UCCU in their learn and earn app. The more impo most important part is you were receive points for completing these trivia and quizzes and you can redeem those points when they stack up for gift cards to places like nike amazon walmart a myriad of other uh providers out there I would encourage you guys to check it out it's all available inside the uccu mobile banking app you can play it anytime anywhere and as we just mentioned the more you play the more you learn and the more you learn the more you earn so get started today the uccu mobile banking app is part of their be money smart uh youth savings program helping families just get smarter overall about their finances. It's all courtesy of UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Thank you for making it be being in every day with us on the podcast. Coming up on Monday, I will talk more about uh, what I took away after re-watching the tape, our film review Mondays, as we like to call them here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. Before we turn our attention to Arkansas, we'll look back. I'll share some of my takeaways after a second viewing of the game. I'm lucky enough when it comes to the home games, I'm there in person and obviously go back and watch it on tape, get different takeaways on both of those. All right, uh, now for the negatives from BYU's game today. What in the world's up with the run game? Uh, we're going to have Connor Pay back on the podcast, and uh, I am excited uh, to hear what his evaluation was because BYU grinded out a grand total of 46 rushing yards on 23 attempts. For those of you who can do math in your head, that is a grand total of two yards per attempt, two, two yards per carry. It's not good enough. LJ Martin ended up leading BYU for the second straight week in rushing, albeit this time with just six carries for 27 yards. Aiden Robbins, just three carries and six yards. This was a guy that rests for a thousand yards a season ago for UNLV. What in the world is happening here? Is the offensive line at fault? Are the running backs just not getting it? Is it a scheme thing? I do not know, frankly. And I'm going to watch this uh, tape when I rewatch this game very intently trying to figure it out. What I did see, though, is the offensive line had far too many missed assignments. And what I mean by missed assignments is, is not all of the offensive line is missing the assignment. What I am saying is that on any given play, all five offensive linemen have a given assignment or designation of what they're supposed to do on that play. I am seeing four guys do their job and one guy screwing up and that's screwing up the timing and the ability for the running backs to really get things going. It's obviously screwing up opportunities for BYU offensively. This did not slow them down in this game against Southern Utah to any large degree in my mind. You still won this game handily. 
despite your paltry output in the rushing attack. But it does need to get better. If you want to go to Arkansas or Kansas the next two weeks or come home to host Cincinnati in your Big 12 opener on that Friday night uh, later this month, You've got to be able to run the football if you want to win those games. I'm not saying you need to run for big numbers. You don't need to be an option team that's running for 300 yards, but you need to rush for more than 46 yards. You've got to. You've got to be better in the rushing attack. I, 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 like I said, I'm going to uh, evaluate this from my own eyes. I look forward to hearing what the coaches have to say about it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when they speak to the media. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll have Connor Pay on for our weekly conversation with him. Our BYU Football with Connor Pay uh, show will be coming to you guys on Wednesday. But it's it, it needs to improve. It's just not good enough for BYU right now. And it, it, it's concerning. It is absolutely concerning. They struggled last week, and I was one saying, okay, I'm going to withhold judgment offensively, and especially when it comes to the run game. Well, I'm officially ready to say I'm concerned about BYU's rushing attack. I, I've got no other way to spin it other than that. They've got to figure it out. I'm going to talk to people who are smarter than me and see if I can get their insight on this and see what I can pass on to you guys. But you should be concerned about it. Uh, like I said, outside of that, BYU played very, very good football, team football. Special teams is very, very good. Marcus McKenzie remains a special teams ace. But the rushing attack, it is the one real downside for BYU in this game. Uh, now, the other thing that was a little bit weird was Southern Utah head coach Delane Fitzgerald. We talked a lot about him this week, played some of his comments. He is a talker. There's no doubt about it. He is an absolute uh, talking head who loves to talk. What he said about this game, post game, quote, Special teams did us in. Special teams doomed us. We gave up a 40 or 50 yard kickoff return in the first half and gave up a block to punt in the first half. We came on the second half and left four points on the board and missed a makeable field goal for that young man, speaking of his own kicker. And we missed a PAT. BYU is one of the best punters, if not the best punter in the country. He usually kicks them 50 to 60 yards out. And then he shanks one off the side of his foot for a 27 yarder that hits our guy in the back of a head for another turnover. Our special teams did us in. Without those errors, I think we're right there with them. Right there with them, what? Behind by three scores? Like, special teams is not the reason you lost that game, Coach. Uh, and I love Coach Fitzgerald. Trust me. He is a good man. I I, I love talking to him. Uh, he, I also made a comment about BYU being – he would rank them in the 50s nationally. I don't have a concern with that because I actually think BYU is right in that realm in terms of the 50s. But to say that special teams is the only reason you lost that game? Eh, about that, Coach, how's your pass defense? How's your pass rush? Like, it just – that one didn't square up with me. So, uh, nonetheless, a uh, little bit weird in terms of the comments from Delane Fitzgerald, but uh, solid, solid win for BYU. The good news is you celebrate wins. BYU's 2-0, and folks. We did the math all summer long talking about BYU. My goal for them was to get to six wins. They are one-third of the way there. They have accomplished what the, the first part of the schedule required them to do, is to handle your business at home and win your tune-up games against Sam Houston and Southern Utah. They have done just that. Now, the calculus is, can you go still win in Arkansas? Can you win one at Kansas? Can you beat Cincinnati when you come back home for that Big 12 opener? That's the next step. You got to get out of this month with a winning record. You got to be three and two. Four and one would be the dream for BYU coming out of the month of September. But you got to get out of this month with at least one more win, it feels like. And we'll continue to break that down as they come along. But uh, solid win for BYU, 2-0. and And it's time for your guys' comments to reign supreme. And we will get to those in just a moment. First, a word on our friends over at Perry Homes, another great local sponsor of ours right here on Locked On Cougars. Appreciate them being a part of it. Whether you're looking for your dream home, ready to upgrade to your uh, first home, whatever it might be, Perry Homes has a house for you. The best part about Perry Homes, my friends, we've heard me talk about them multiple times if you're an everydayer, is they've got communities all along the Wasatch Front, Tooele, Wasatch, uh, not, excuse me, not Wasatch, Davis, Salt Lake, and Utah counties, as well as multiple communities in Washington County near St. George in the southern end of the state. They got all the options for you guys. They got 50 different home designs, Ramblers, two stories and uh, condos, everything in between. They've got it, uh, a match for you as a home buyer and a, a consumer out there who may be looking to buy their first home. Like I said, your dream home, no matter what you're looking for, they got options for you guys. Best part is right now, they're also offering you guys uh, incentives through the preferred lender to save you a little bit on the interest rate side of things. So get on it today. Visit perryhomesutah.com to find out what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, homes, Utah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utahns have been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your routine. All right, my friends, it is your time to shine right here 
on uh, the postcast edition of the show. I am going to add my screen sharing feature to the page, and it's your guys' time to shine on the podcast. I threw it out after the game, uh, asking for your guys' takeaways after BYU beat Southern Utah 41-16. to We'll start off in order. Jimmy Dub at Cougar Jimmy says, that's the A-Rod offense we know and love. The old line still looks a step slow and a bit overwhelmed. Still too many stupid mistakes in big moments. But Slovis was rolling out there today. 400, uh, four, four TDs, 350 yards, and Jay Hill's defense looks good. Those balls those boys can play ball, Jake. The defense did look good. I got no doubt. They, they looked very, very good. Next one, Tuckinator, our good friend. Is it time to demote and swap out RB1 to LJ Martin? I love Aiden, but he's literally been a flat zero factor. I said it, Tuckinator. I'm concerned about the rushing attack. They've got to get some life injected into it. I don't know what it is. I said this in the post game show, by the way. I probably should have added this. I think the offensive line, top to bottom. Kingsley Suomati is considered to be a first-round talent, folks. He's not playing like it right now. Caleb Etienne was a 13-game starter a year ago at Oklahoma State. He's not playing like a power five offensive lineman. I think the entire offensive line needs to go back to the drawing board and have just a big old competition this week. All jobs up for grabs. Go earn your job. It may be time that you move Connor Pay back to center and tell Paul Miley it was a nice experiment. I, you need to shake something up. You've got to try something new. All right. Uh, next one, Daniel Rigby. Please don't cheese. Says LJ needs to be getting all the carries. SU's coach going scorched earth is quite funny. Not sure where he felt to say this, the need to say some of those things. Pass rush still needs work. My original preseason projection was five and seven, and it's still looking about right for me. Well, Daniel, uh, yeah, the calculus is if you want to get five and seven, yeah, you come out of this month two and three, absolutely. You lose the next three games. Uh, five and seven, it looks like a very real possibility. Good friend Mojo, serving a country as a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force, weighing in here. Mojo 041719 says, One thing I have loved to see over the last two games is great tackling fundamentals on defense. The new staff is making their presence felt, and the results are very apparent. He's not wrong about that, folks. I, I had somebody point out to me who uh, doesn't necessarily uh, watch a ton of BYU uh, in terms of like the fundamentals. They pointed out to me that Jay Hill, he tore this thing literally down to the studs defensively. They went through spring ball and went through more tackling drills than I've seen with my own eyes in many, many years for BYU on defense. He is building them from the ground up, and they look much more fundamentally sound in terms of their overall tackling. I will give you that. It's absolutely impressive. All right, Nicholas Chadwick and Nick underscore Chadwick 15 says, once again, the O-line struggles. Is it A-Rod's scheme, Funk's lack, lack of teaching, or just players not doing what they are supposed to do? Combination of all three? I don't know, Nick. Like I said, I, I'm confused by it myself. I am looking forward to watching the tape and seeing what I can glean from it, and I'll be sure to report back on this. And like I said, I'm going to reach out to people who are far smarter than I am when it comes to this, and we'll dig into that, and we'll have more answers for you guys on a, a future edition of Locked On Cougars over the next week. Uh, Jake War, Jake War says, uh, happy with the passing game and QB play. Yes, agreed. Running game, running back and O-line is a little concerning. Agreed. The Ryan Rico to Marcus McKenzie gauntlet might be the deadliest weapon we have. Folks, I mentioned it. Marcus McKenzie, absolute special teams ace. There are people saying that Ryan Rico's BYU's MVP in terms of their special teams right now. Isn't it Marcus McKenzie? Like, the dude is just unflappable. He's making big tackles. He recovered that muffed uh, a kick. I went off the back of the head of that SUU player. Heads up play by him. He's using that track speed to great effect. And once he puts it all together, folks, he's going to be a special teams ace. And that special teams thing could get him to the NFL alone. I'm saying it's a long ways off, obviously, for a young man like that. But that special teams ability it is not something to, to ignore. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, George Q, our good friend George Q Cannon says, Geo Q Cannon says, need the O-line to live up to the potential and start dominating. You're not wrong. The O-line's got to pick it up. And like I said, Connor Pay, you've heard him the first two weeks we've had him on the show. He doesn't uh, mince words. And I look forward to his evaluation of where the struggles are this week. Uh, we'll have that for you, like I said, on Wednesday. Zach at Zach underscore Zilla BYU. Got to see more push out of the offensive line. The pass blocking is good, but run blocking is putrid. The O-line is a position group I had highest expectations for, and they are the most disappointing so far. Either Funk helps them get to that together, or we need someone else. I'm never going to call for people's jobs. It's not my position to do that, but uh, they do need to figure something out. Uh, no doubt on the O-line. They got to just, they got to get it fixed. All right, Corey at true blue underscore BYU. The passing offense has quelled my worries, but we head into a real test next week. I am however worried about our lack of running game, and that could be an issue as the season progresses. I, no, no doubt. You've got to see more uh, in terms of the, the rushing attack. You got to stay more balanced. I will say this. There's the whole old adage, you run to set up the pass. There is an adage that also works in this modern day of football, folks, pass to set up the run. If BYU's passing attack is as high-flying as it appeared it might be against Southern Utah, 
Well, that could open up running lanes by forcing defenses to back off in terms of having to drop into coverage more often. And that could open some holes for BYU in the running game. I'm not saying it's a perfect solution, but it's something to monitor going forward. Our good friend Nick Lee, uh, obviously up there in the Pacific Northwest at Nick Lee 51, happy with 41 points and a comfortable win. However, two big concerns for me heading into the most brutal stretch of schedule in BYU history. That is 10 straight power five games, folks. Get ready for it. Number one. Offensive line, especially in run blocking, 2.4 yards per rush is abysmal. He put this out probably just before they dropped to the two points, thanks to the knees they took at the end of the game. And then the secondary safety depth and too many third and long conversions. Uh, biggest thing on those conversions, by the way, the second part of this, is that the safeties cannot allow receivers to get beyond them. We saw Isaiah Wooden on a fantastic throw from Justin Miller score a touchdown uh, on a play that Malik Moore just can't let that, let that wide receiver get past him. He's the deep safety for a reason. Nobody gets beyond you. You cannot afford that. You're right about that, Nick. You've got to be better about that. And yes, the depth is a concern, obviously, having lost two safeties already for BYU going into the year. Hopefully that Talon Alfrey uh, will be back before too long. Uh, TBD on when he ultimately gets back. All right. Uh, a lot of these are going to be repeat uh, comments. We're going to kind of roll through these. Uh, Matt Attitude, Matt Rita says, got to figure out this run game. No doubt. Uh, Riley, slowest for six. Better performance than last week, but still not satisfying. That's I agree. It was an improved uh, product out there for BYU. Was it completely like 100%? You're like, ah, oh, that was great. It's exactly what we wanted. No, I will always put like the 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 full satisfaction, like you're you feeling everything worked to a, a to every single level. You want that type of a performance? The performance I will always think of with that that I have seen with my own eyes is that domination in 2008 of UCLA, 59 to nothing. Defense dominated, offense made it just look easy. That is probably the perfect, like, that's the full satisfaction game. And Riley, you're right. It's not to that level. Absolutely. Uh, Jordan Kennard, still worried about the run game. Agreed. Jason W. Kelly, about as good as we can hope for. Let's see what this team really is next week. Hard to take anything crazy away from this. It's true. It's an FCS team. You, you, next week's the real litmus test. Now, uh, Arkansas has barely tested themselves. They played an FCS game last week, and then they just beat the doors off of Kent State, who is one of the worst teams in FBS football. So uh, next week, big, big test for BYU. Uh, Paul Nielsen, a win is a win. Slovis, uh, Slovis, Slovis, uh, Slovis threw the ball really good. Is the O-line really this bad? Or are, we just under, or are they just underperforming? Not able to run the ball effectively last week or this week. Very concerning. Hopefully they'll get it figured out. If not, I feel we are in for a long season. If you can't run the ball effectively, yes, it will cause issues because teams will load up, obviously, and make it so you can't throw the football. At least they'll try to do that. Uh, JT Lamro, much better all-around performance for the gauntlet that begins next week. It's going to be crazy. It is, folks. I cannot wait. It, it's going to be 10 straight games, 11 weeks uh, with a bye week in there of just brutal, brutal opposition for BYU. And they've got to be ready for it. I'm interested to see how they hold up against it, obviously. And it starts a week from uh, tonight. Yeah, they'll be in uh, down there in uh, uh, Fayetteville uh, taking on Arkansas. Uh, Yeehaw, Katie Burner 155 says, a relief. I'm glad we didn't have to throw in the towel on Slovis. He's him. I would like to see LJ utilize more, but all around, I am happy with it. Looking forward to a good competitive game next Saturday. Agreed. It's going to be fun to see how they match up against Arkansas. You know the BYU is going to have some revenge on their mind in that game. Uh, Richard Molman, really good game overall. Great to see Slovis in the passing game, a rebound. Concern for, concerns for me. <laughs> Excuse me. Still a little bit of the remnant of that cold. Concerns for me are the lack of sacks, lack of a significant run game, and how many big plays the defense gave up. I think three very valid concerns. Uh, the big plays the defense gave up, uh, yeah, like I said, I think those are rectified just in terms of an overall scheme and all that type of stuff. Like I said, don't let the wide receiver get beyond you if you're the deep safety. It, it seems like a pretty normal thing, but you got to figure it out. Uh, let's see. And then uh, two other uh, comments here. Provo Bandit at Provo Bandit on Twitter says defense is still good. BYU has many good receivers and Keaton Slovis is good. So overall BYU is doing good, but I believe the real test for BYU will be Arkansas and Kansas back to back. No doubt. Maybe the best two quarterbacks BYU sees this season in KJ Jefferson for the Razorbacks. And then the following week at Kansas, which I will be there for against Jalen Daniels and the Jayhawks Two very very high-level quarterbacks. BYU is going to have to battle in those games. Just two very good teams overall. And then the final uh, point here, Jeff Hanor, a good friend down there in Atlanta. Jeff says, Keaton needs to get going sooner. I would agree. It was a little bit of a slow start for BYU overall uh, next week. And LJ Martin needs to start. Uh, I, I think it might be coming. It just feels like it might be LJ's time to shine. He is a phenomenal freshman. Absolutely lights out. And the final point, excited to have Epps back next week. Kalani Satake did say that he expects to have uh, Cody Epps available next week. 
when BYU takes on Arkansas. And fingers crossed that is true. Having all your horses, and I mean all your horses available to you, be very, very important for BYU's chances in winning that game. So there you go. That's the postcast. If you got more comments on it, drop them in the YouTube comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, send us another tweet or two uh, at Locked On Cougars, or will you chat to us on Facebook or Instagram? Locked On Cougars on both of those chan- uh, those social media platforms, I should say, as well. And appreciate your guys' patronage. Appreciate you guys being every day with us. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Like I said, Monday edition of the podcast. Back to business. We uh, film review Monday, talking about what I took away after rewatching that game. A recap of the weekend that was in BYU sports. By the BYU women's soccer folks crushing Utah 6-1 absolutely incredible stuff backing up why they're ranked number one in the country we got number one ranked team in Provo folks we need to celebrate a little more heavily than maybe we have uh before this but big win for BYU women's soccer we'll do a full recap of all the BYU sports from the weekend that was uh coming up on our Monday edition of the show so once again thank you for tuning in this has been the Locked On Cougars podcast special edition postcast is BYU Downs South, uh, not South Utah, uh, Southern Utah University, and uh, sends Coach uh, Fitz uh, packing for a, another season. But nonetheless, uh, more to come on our Monday edition of the show. Once again, this has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. Hope you guys have a great night and tune in on Monday.